What exactly should you be practicing? It's a pretty overwhelming thought, right? It could go in hundreds of directions. I'm Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons, and I've been teaching for over 25 years. And through trial and error, and lots of students, and lots of just learning, I've come up with 11 essential skills that I believe will explode your improvement and really put you on the right path to becoming a successful jazz musician. Tip number one, know your intervals, both ascending and descending. What is an interval? It's the distance between two notes. You've probably heard half step, whole step, major third, minor third, perfect fourth. Those are intervals. Learn them both ways. This will vastly improve your ear and it will make a lot of things make more sense. I would encourage you to sing intervals. Sing them. One half step, one whole step, one minor third, one four. Now I'm doing numbers. I think learning intervals as numbers is much more beneficial than solfege. You know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Solfege has its place, but I think when we're learning to play jazz, numbers have such an important aspect of how things function and how they relate to each other. I don't need to know what the ray is. I need to know what the two is. I need to know what the three is. Okay, so sing intervals away from your instrument. Something you could also do is like, if you've got a C here, let me go a little lower. There's an F. Let's say I treat that as one and I'm gonna sing intervals away from that. Third. Third, major third. Perfect fourth. Half step below, minor third below, perfect fourth below. So you get the idea. That's a great thing to do. You can really test yourself. Um, but this is to develop your inner ear and singing will do such amazing things for this. Another thing you could do is um, pick a something out of a fake book and just try to sing the numbers as they relate to the chord qualities. Okay, that's a good thing to do. So intervals, check out your intervals. Number two, know your key signatures. Know your key signatures, both major and their relative minor. Along with that, memorize the root movement of the circle of fifths or circle of fourths. It's called both. If we're playing through the circle of fifths, counterclockwise, it gives us the circle of fourths. And you'll see that that movement is so common in so much of what we play. If we do the circle of fourths all the way up, I just covered all 12 keys, but that doesn't really do much. But what you can get used to is if we, let's say, start on C, memorize this root movement. C, up a fourth to F, down a fifth to B flat, up a fourth to E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat or F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, C. So you're just doing perfect fourths ascending down by whole steps. Learn that in all different areas. Let's start on F. Same movement. Sorry. Learn this. It's, it's not rocket science. You just got to memorize it. Okay? Number three. Know your dominance. Know your five chords. Barry Harris once said the dominant is the most important chord. In many cases, I agree with that. The dominant creates movement. It creates interest. It can move us to different key centers. Without the dominant, the music would be pretty boring. So know all of your dominants. Know your five chords of your major keys. Also, know your secondary dominants, which are all the dominants within a key and subdominants as well. And then I also like to indicate something called detour dominance. These are dominant chords that will take us to a totally different key center. But getting to that key center that's different from the original key is so much easier through dominance. Let's check out all of me and just to see it. So I'm going to play through just the first eight bars and then we'll talk about it. 
Okay, that E7 then goes to to D minor. If we look at this, we're in the key of C. What does that E7 mean? It's the five of the six chord, which is A, but then we go to A7, which becomes the five of D minor. Okay? That's all secondary dominance. That created movement all within the key of C. So know your secondary dominance. Number four, practice everything in the context of tunes and learn tunes. The tunes are where everything comes to life. If I'm just working on a scale, that's just a scale. If I'm gonna run scales on a two, five, one, That's valuable, but you use a tune to bring it to life. Uh, if I took the same 2-5-1 idea, let's say I'm going to practice alter dominance, dominance, how about that, in every key. So find tunes where you can plug in the 5 chord and make it altered. If I'm going to take tune up, I'll just try this, um, playing the 2 5 ones in tune up. You get the idea. Work on everything in the context of tunes. Number five, transposition. This may be one of the most essential skills you can have as a musician. Not just a jazz musician, but especially as a jazz musician. To be able to play things in any key is beyond invaluable. If you're a comping instrument, playing piano, guitar, you're gonna get hired for gigs, singers, uh, horn players, whoever. People prefer to play tunes in different keys. So you can't just show up and say, well, I only know it in this key. You have to be able to do this stuff in different keys. It takes time, but it pays huge dividends. I would work on transposition from the very beginning. Even if it's a three note phrase, Take that through all the keys. Three, two, one. 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 If you can do that, then build on it. This all comes back to knowing your keys, your intervals. All of these things will play in the transposition. I've always said the best transposers are the people who can combine their ear with their intellect. You don't just have to only hear it. Use your knowledge of the music to help you do this. But if you transpose things in every key, your landscape's gonna just open up wide. Now, here's a quick tip for piano players and guitar players. If you arrange something, if you arrange a solo piano piece or something for guitar, take that arrangement and transpose it. It will pay huge dividends. If you don't have time to practice things in every key, I always tell my students, take whatever you're doing, try to do it a half step above and then a half step below. You're gonna cover two pretty unrelated keys to wherever you are. And because normally a half step is going to have many more sharps or flats or 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 the same way below. Like if you're in the key of D, you've got two sharps, you go up to E flat, now you're in a flat key go down to D flat, now you're in another flat key that has even more flats. Um, so that's a really nice thing you can do if you, if you simply can't quite get to all 12 keys with your time. So transposition is huge. Number six, the other T, transcription. I'm sure you hear it a lot from teachers, from players, you gotta transcribe. 
There's a reason for it. You're going to hear me talk on this channel a lot about language. Well, transcriptions is language. It's learning the language of the music. It's not just learning licks. I know that's a term we always use, but I like to think of it as language. It's the syntax. And the more that you listen this way and learn this way, you're going to understand how the music comes to life through all of these players' masterful interpretation of the language. Lines, solos, voicings, rhythms, anything. It doesn't have to be full solos. It can be a four note phrase that you dig. Just transcribe anything and everything. And you don't always have to write it down. Just start learning, play along with records. Uh, this will skyrocket your playing much more than reading out of a book or anything like that. Listen and transcribe, which leads me to number seven. Listen all the time. Listen to albums. Go listen to live bands. Listen on YouTube. Listen to whatever you can get your hands on. Listen constantly. And I, I think there's three levels of listening, and this is a good thing to think about. You have kind of the surface level, you know, you have it on in the background, and maybe you're cleaning the house or cooking. That's fine. The next level is, you know, maybe a little more intently. But what I'm talking about is the third level, where you put on an album and you're listening with a purpose. Listen to the ride cymbal for the whole album. How is the ride cymbal relating to the piano player? How is the ride cymbal and the bass player lining up? How is the snare drum and the piano player lining up comping wise? Like that's the kind of stuff. Can you hear the chord changes? What does the walking bass sound like? What kind of chords are they playing? Are they thick? Are they thin? Is there even any piano on it? What does a horn player play like when there's a piano player behind them or without one? All of these things, listen deeply and listen to learn. And when you go hear live music, listen to learn. Try to hear what they're doing. Watch how they interact with people. Listen with your eyes as well. So I think I beat that one pretty good. Listen, listen, listen. Number eight, work on your time and your rhythm. Work on your time. Having solid time is more important than the notes you play. Having a solid rhythmic foundation is more important than the notes you play. I like to work on time in two different ways. I used to be like a big, put the metronome on two and four, like a, like a hi-hat. Um, a lot of people do that. I don't really do that much anymore because I feel like it constricts the, the beat. Um... I still do it sometimes. The thing I really like to work on, and that's it's something I've been doing very recently in the last like year or two, I call it kind of bigger time. So it's like set the metronome instead of like quarter notes or eighth notes or two and four, set it for maybe every two bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Use that to play along with you're going to start feeling how your inner clock gets way more solid because you're hearing the time on a bigger scale. It also makes your time a little more elastic because it's not rigid like a, like a grid, like in Pro Tools. But it, that's also valuable to do too. Work on it all, but I'm just trying to give you some different ideas. Work on your time. Practice with a metronome. Practice with Drum Genius. That's a great app though, because you can play with real drummers, looped, okay? Time, it's so important. Number nine, be able to play the blues in every key, or at least the most common keys. C, F, B flat, E flat, G, A flat, D flat, D. <laughs> I'm gonna name all of them. The blues is so important. Learn the blues, learn the classic old style blues, we know one, four, five, learn the jazz blues, learn the bird blues, blues for Alice changes, learn minor blues, learn blues in three, four. You cannot play the blues enough. It's the backbone for everything we play. From the very beginning, even the most modern stuff, the great modern players, they have the blues in their playing. Um, even if you don't always hear it, it's in there. Brad Meldow can play the shit out of the blues. 
but he can also go very esoteric and and Brahms and classical and all and just but the blues is in there so learn to play the blues in every key number 10 I would argue along with the blues work on rhythm changes in every key again if not all 12 maybe some common ones B flat A flat C F E flat those chord changes uh, can really if you can navigate those chord changes, you can navigate a lot of other chord changes. So I would work on rhythm changes in as many keys as you can. Um, it's helped me a lot. It's opened up the music a lot for me. And number 11, last one, have some knowledge of the piano. Know this instrument. If you don't play piano, just start learning chords, um, Try to, when you're learning tunes, see if you can harmonize a melody with thirds and sevenths. Th that would do wonders for your musicianship. I think every musician should have knowledge of the piano. I play piano, and I feel like I have <laughs> pretty limited knowledge of this instrument, which is kind of a, you know, daunting yet beautiful thing. But I think everybody should have some knowledge of the piano. I remember there was an interview with Dizzy Gillespie, he was uh, talking about Miles Davis um, and Miles would come to him after seeing him and Charlie Parker on 52nd Street and say, what was the meaning of that note that you played? And Dizzy was said, you got to learn to play the piano. So Miles used to write down chord symbols on matchbooks and take them back to Juilliard and practice those chords on the piano. So get some knowledge of the piano. It'll help you tremendously. Hey, if you want a cool way to implement some of these concepts, check out my jazz warm-ups and etudes package. It's a set of four etudes based on four common jazz forms, tune-up, rhythm changes, the blues, and autumn leaves. Um, it'll help you with transposition, it'll help with time, it'll help with lines, and these are transcriptions, so you're getting language from the masters. Um, so if you want to do it, link's in the description below. This was a little bit of a different video, but I hope it was somewhat helpful. Um, and I hope you got something out of it. So, you know, get into that practice room, take care of business, have a good one, and happy practicing.